As someone with a disability myself, it was certainly not my intention to offend anyone. That's Kent Hare, Disabilities Minister. He's apologizing to a group of thalidomide survivors who accuse him of insulting them and humiliating them right to their faces. They'd been at a meeting demanding more compensation. Thalidomide was a government-approved drug that caused birth defects. But they say Minister Hare told them, unsympathetically, everyone in Canada has a sob story. And it didn't stop there. David Cochran explains exactly what happened, and he asked the minister to explain what he said. A tough day for Kent Hare taking public heat over something he allegedly said in private. Within a period of 30 minutes in that meeting, Minister Hare managed to insult and degrade us repeatedly. A group of thalidomide survivors saying the minister belittled them. Then he went on to say, well, you don't have it so bad. Everyone in Canada has a sob story. Lots of people have it bad in Canada. Disabled people, poor people, not just you. And he said to us, so, you probably have about 10 years left then now. That's good news for the Canadian government. Fuel for the opposition. Can the mi Minister for Persons with Disabilities clarify what he meant by these words which he recently used while meeting with a group of thalidomide patients? While some of my comments were misconstrued, as soon as I learned my comments were felt to be offensive, I immediately called the organization directly and apologized. Hare never dealt with the specifics of the allegations during question period or when talking to reporters. Did you really say everyone in Canada has a soft story? We, we talked for a ha half hour about the trials and tribulations of many people in this country and in fact about the difficult situations of, of the people with thalidomide. He stuck with his non-specific apology. But did you utter that phrase? Did you actually say to this group that everyone in Canada has a sob story? We, we talked for a half hour on a numerous issues, okay? We talked about the difficulty their lives have been, the difficulty of many people with disabilities. But he did deny saying the survivors only had 10 years left. I did, I did not say that you only have 10, 10. We, our government is working as hard as we can on behalf of people with disabilities. But this wasn't just about Hare's words in that meeting. There was also an allegation about his hands. Reached out to her and grabbed her by the arm, very close to her breast, in a way that was inappropriate and unwelcome. And I think uh, that, was, um, that was a shock to us all, too. Any touching was completely accidental. And uh, if there was, I completely apologize for it. And David joins us now with more on this because, David, how big of a problem is this for Hare? Well, you know, Andrew, it's never a good day when your disabled minister for persons with disabilities is accused of mocking the disabled. So there's that. And this has been a rough stretch for Hare over the past few months because in the most recent cabinet shuffle, he was demoted from Veterans Affairs to this portfolio and amateur sports, in large part because of his inability to make progress on some of the bigger veterans issues. And now he's having this problem today. And, you know, it reminds a lot of people in this town of former conservative cabinet minister Julian Fantino when he was Veterans Affairs minister and he was caught on tape yelling at a group of veterans. You don't want public spats like this with stakeholders, especially where you have to defend your private conduct. Now, the saving grace for hearing this is that the thalidomide survivors, they've accepted his apology. They want to move forward. The prime minister's office at this point seems satisfied with how Hare has handled this. So a bad day for the minister, Andrew, but probably not one that is immediately fatal to his cabinet career. Mm. David Cochran in Ottawa. Thanks. You're welcome. Now, David mentioned the thalidomide survivors wanting to move forward. They're in Ottawa demanding the compensation they feel the government owes them. There are 95 such survivors born in the early 1960s with birth defects such as malformed limbs and internal organ damage. Their mothers took thalidomide to control morning sickness. It was widely prescribed and government approved, but with terrible consequences. So in 2015, the federal government tried to make amends, regular annual payments and a lump sum to each victim of $125,000. But the group today wants double that amount, saying they're struggling to make ends meet because of their disabilities.